I came in 1966 on a little ship. I was what they call a 10 pound palm. So I was an immigrant, but they actually got me for nothing because I was 15 years old and they didn't even have to pay 10 pound. So I'm a freebie. I just got here. <clears throat> so I came on a wee boat through the Suez Canal and to Australia, mate. Yeah, I arrived. We flew into Australia. We migrated back in 1966 with my parents. But it was Nadia's idea. Said, well, why don't we start our own company? And I was like, that's a fantastic idea, Nadia. What did you have in mind? What would we actually be doing? <laughs> and and Nadia was like, well, you're an engineer. Can't we do that? And I thought, Right, that's settled, off we go. So that was really how it started. It was truly Nadia's idea. Then we started the company and... We started by consulting and, um, and then Alf came up with the um, great innovative idea, the row bag packaging machine. Um, and what was so special about the row bag and the um, innovative idea was uh, you could double the speed uh, packing uh, snack foods, which is a fragile product to pack with very high performance. The idea was actually very simple because I had a, a lot of experience in the snack food industry with Arnott's at the time. And I was quite familiar with all of the packaging machinery for uh, snack foods. And it always intrigued me that all of the machines, there was about 22 suppliers globally, and every one of those machines ran at 60 cycles per minute. And when I thought about the physics and the maths of it, I could not understand why they didn't run at 120 a minute. <clears throat> but there, there was reasons. The industry had a belief system and I just thought it was wrong. So we we developed a, a continuous rotary machine and it could do, in the early days, 100, 110, and, and it was just a massive success globally. Well, Australia is a great country to actually develop or come up with innovative ideas, but the population of Australia is small, so we had to look at export. The UK was the first country we exported to? Actually, at the beginning, it was really difficult. <clears throat> Number one, we as a company were, there was only back in those days, if I remember correctly, there was 11 people in our whole company. There were, there was about seven of us in Sydney and three or four of us in Melbourne. That was a sum total of the whole company. And, <clears throat> As Nadia points out, we were going to have to go international. So we uh, set about setting up first in Birmingham, England, and uh, it took a while for the industry to accept us as a supplier. Number one, Australia had no reputation for building sophisticated equipment at all. And number two, half the world didn't actually know where the hell Australia was. So you, you, we had to build up our reputation as a company and as a country that are capable of doing these things. And, and that took quite a few years before we actually built up the success. <laughs>